early in the morning, rising to the street. Light me up that cigarette, and I strap shoes on my feet. Can you tell me something? Something I don't know. Something I've been wondering about for the last week. How are limits defined? Could you please tell me? I want to be able to evaluate derivatives. Life is too short not to know what limits are, cause you might get run over or you might get shot. All right, and this wonderful ending. What we'll do in this video is first learn how to estimate limits using table of values, and then we'll finally define what limits are and uh, the closed concept of one-sided limits. So let's get started. All right, so let me start by estimating the value of a limit using a table of values. So suppose that I'm interested in the limit as x goes to 1 of the function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, let me first study this function uh, in more detail. So how can I write x squared minus 1 over x minus 1? Well, the first thing you realize is that the numerator is a difference of squares, so I can write it as x minus 1 times x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. And now you might be very tempted to just get rid of the x minus 1s, but you can't really do that. You have to be very careful. What you can do, however, is rewrite this function as follows. So you can indeed uh, divide upstairs and downstairs by x minus 1 as long as x is not equal to 1. So if x is not equal to 1, then you can do it, and then the function just becomes x plus 1. However, at the point x equals to 1, this function here is not defined because you get 0 over 0. So it is undefined if x is equal to 1. Now these functions, so this fiction function here defined in a piecewise fashion is exactly equal to this function. But you have to be very careful, and you can only simplify by x minus 1 if x is not equal to 1. All right, so with this knowledge now, we can actually sketch the graph of the function. What would this look like? So this is x. Well, this is just a line with slope 1, which goes through the point 0, 1 here. But it has a hole somewhere in here corresponding to the point x equals to 1 because it's not defined x equals to 1. So having a hole here means that the function is not defined at this point. All right, so how can, evaluate, how can we evaluate the limit now as x goes to 1? So what does it mean? So limit means that we're taking x to be very, very close to 1 uh, on either side of 1. So one way we can do it is to write down a table of values. So what I'm going to do is choose x's. Let's do the case where x approaches 1 uh, from the left-hand side first, and then I'll do the right-hand side, x greater than 1. So I'm going to choose a bunch of x's, getting closer and closer to 1, and then evaluate the value of f of x, and then look for uh, whether it converges to a certain value. So I could choose, for example, 0, then 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, and so on. Now, what is the value of the function at these points? Well, for all of these points, x is not equal to 1. So I can actually evaluate the function just by evaluating x plus 1. So I give would give me 1. This would give 1.5. 1.9, 1.99, 1 1.999. All right, so it looks like it converges, the value of the function converges to 2. But I have to be careful, I need to evaluate it on the right-hand side as well, so for x is uh, approaching 1 from the uh, right side. So I could choose, for example, x equals to 2, 1.5, 1.1, 1.01, 1 .001. then evaluate the function. Again, all these x's are not equal to 1, so I can uh, just pick the function here as being x plus 1, so I get 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. So from this process here, I can guess or estimate the value of the limit here as x goes to 1 as being equal to 2, because from both sides, uh, the value of the function approaches 2. And if you look at a graph, that makes sense. We're looking at, uh, the, basically, the limit here means that we're taking x to be very close to 1, and we're looking at the value of f of x if I, x gets close to 1, and the value here is going to be equal to 2. Even though the function is not defined, if you take x to be very, very close to 1, the function approaches 2. Okay, so this is very good, but this is just a guess or an estimate. How can we make all of that rigorous? 
Okay, so I will now try to define this limit process mathematically. But I should say right away that we're not, in this class, we're not going to see the precise definition of limits. But if you are interested, you're welcome to look at section 2.4 in the textbook. So we write this expression here and say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l if we can make the values of f of x arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently close to a on either side of a, but not equal to a. So what this means is that uh, we're looking at the behavior of the function as x becomes very, very close to a. So if you take x to have values very close to a, if the function converges to a finite value l, then we say that the limit is equal to l. So that's exactly what we did with the table of values, but now we're formalizing this process mathematically. It's important to note here that uh, we, it has to be true on both sides of a, and also that we're not taking uh, x equals to a. So the limit as x goes to a of the function f of x equals to l is not at all the same statement as saying that the value of the function at x equals to a is equal to l. These are not the same thing. Sometimes they are, it is true that both the limit and the value of the functions are the same, but it doesn't have to be true. Okay, so let's just work through an example. So let me just sketch here a function, something like this. Something like this, and I'll take this point here to be 2, here, say 2, say 4 here. And let me uh, look at the value of the limit of the function at a number of different points. So let's first look at the following limit. So what is the limit of the function as x approaches 1? All right, so where is 1? So 1 is going to be a point here. And given that this is a line, the value of the function here will be 1. So if x approaches 1 from either side, then we see that the function approaches the value 1 as well. So the limit here would be equal to 1. And it turns out that in this case, the value of the function at 1 is also equal to 1. But again, that doesn't have to be the case, as we'll see. Okay, so let's now look at the case of uh, the limit as x goes to 0 of the same function. All right, so there's a hole here in a function at x equals to 0. But if I look at the behavior of the function as x approaches 0 from either side, then we see that the function approaches the value 0. So the limit here as uh, x goes to 0 of the function is equal to 0, even though the function here evaluated at 0 is actually undefined. So you see that the two statements are not the same in general. All right, and let me now look at the limit as x goes to 2 of the function. Now, what happens? Well, this is problematic. If I approach 2 from the left-hand side, then the function approaches 2 as well. But if I approach 2 from the right-hand side, the value of the function approaches 4. So how can I evaluate this limit? So to be able to make sense of this, we need to introduce a new concept, uh, which is called one-sided limits. So we write this expression here, if uh, f of x uh, gets close or approaches l when x approaches a from the left, or from values of x below a. And we write this expression, so we'll do a plus instead of a minus, if we approach from the right. OK, so if I look back at my function here, now I can make sense of the value of the, uh, of the limit as x goes to 2. But I need to treat both the left limit and the, si the right-sided limit separately. So I could evaluate, for example, the limit as x goes to 2 from the left-hand side of my function. So as x goes to 2 from this side, I see that the function here approaches 2. So the limit would be equal to 2. However, the limit, if I approach 2 from the plus side, so from the right-hand side, then I see that the value of the function will approach 4. So the two one-sided limits here are not the same. And in fact, here, what is the value of the function at x equals to 2? Well, there's a hole here, so it's not defined here, but there's a, 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 a black hole, or blue in this case, hole here, so filled, which means that the value of the function is exactly this. So the value of the function is 4 in this case. So it turns out to be equal to one of the two-sided limits. It could be anything. In fact, it doesn't have to be equal to any of those. Okay, but what is the relation between these one-sided limits and the definition of limits that we saw previously? Well, here's the relation. So the, the limit without plus or minus, so the kind of full limit of a function is equal to L, if and only if both the left-sided 
and the right sided limits are equal and they're both equal to L. That's what we uh, said in the first slide when I defined limits. So I basically said there that uh, the limit, uh, the statement was true if uh, f of x approached L for x approaching A from either side of A. So that's exactly what this statement is saying. So again, if I look back at my example function, so we've seen here that the limit as x goes to 2 negative, so from the left hand side of f of x was equal to 2, while the limit as x goes to 2 plus right hand side of f of x was equal to 4. So these two are different indeed. It's not the same if I approach 2 from the left side and the right side. So that implies that the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x is not well defined. So what we write here is dNe which stands for does not exist. So the limit does not exist in this case because the left-sided limit is not equal to the right-sided limit. All right, so let me summarize what we've seen in this video. So first we've seen that we can estimate the value of a limit with a table of values. All right, second we've seen a kind of more mathematical definition of the limit of a function, which concerns the behavior of the function as x approaches a from either side of a. Now we've also seen how we can define a left-sided limit and a right-sided limit. So this is basically when we take uh, into account the behavior of the function when x approaches a from the left side separately from the behavior of the function as x approaches a from the right-hand side. And finally, we've seen the relation between the two, which is that the limit here exists is equal to L if and only if both sided limits, both one sided limits exist and are actually equal to the same value, namely L. So this is very important. So if you have, if you're asked to evaluate the limit of a function, you first you need to check that uh, both one sided limits exist and that they're both equal to the same value.